Hey, I thought I would show a little bit on my pun combat. Uh, this is my scene. I just I just did a build. I hit play on this guy too. And I'm I'm still doing a lot of work. There's still well, I mean obviously there's heavy construction. So I'm gonna grab two characters here. Join that game. So here we have. Yeah, I'm going to move this over here, and so we can see this one a little better. So we can see uh, how things are actually linked here. So as you can see, like I mean, it's it's linked so far. I mean, everything's. Oh, I got a mosquito on my screen. Um, Everything's there, and like I said, I'm, I'm working on the inventory stuff and so forth, and I'll show you some of the logic here after. But anyways, I mean, I've got this nice little particle that plays that I, I made that nice and simple, and we have this target up here, and I can hit a button, and I can, as you see, like how I move, free movement. If I hit a button, I can lock on. Right now, his name is Player. Uh, but I've, I've changed a lot on how I, I can now move in a very different manner. And if I say come over here, hit that same button, I'll link everything up here. So now, uh, on, on the AI, there is a vulnerability check which right now I have default as turned on, uh, which obviously wouldn't be that way. So essentially you have combat, and the combat's not the fastest paced combat, right? Like it's, you know, like, kind of like that. Um, but as, as you're attacking AI, and the AI hack can, can do the, the same thing to the player, is you can be parried right or blocked or whatever so if I come over here for example and I attack his front he should automatically parry me right he doesn't have a weapon but I, I end up going to this kind of a, a parried state and I can't do anything and that's when my vulnerability would would turn on and I'll have a some sort of display in the HUD here uh, for the player and for the AI so when the AI when you hit them, or if you parry the AI, they become vulnerable. And vulnerable opens up stabbing. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you can get in behind them, you can stab as well. And, and if you see, if I walk up to this guy, and you can see it on both screens, so it's, I mean, everything's synced. And I, I can stab. You can also notice, like, the damage came down. Everything's synced there as well. If I come up and step again, he dies, the display goes away, and he fully dies. Alright, so there we have, I mean, there's no sound, and I don't, I don't have any blood on the stabs or anything yet. I'm still trying to work out a lot of those kinks. But overall, I mean, as you can see, everything is synced over, everything's working fine. Uh, so I thought I would show you a bit of that logic. Uh, which all of that stuff is on my little player here so we have the body visuals I did that in the last or last video of this and that's mainly for the character creation end of things uh, one thing you'll notice here I use a lot of bools and I have these on continuous uh, that makes makes syncing up various things very are much easier and I use bools over triggers just for the way photon handles triggers it doesn't doesn't do a very good job uh, but I'm, I'm still doing a pile of work there I did make one little no that's okay th this is uh, as from the last video 
I think I've changed the name of it maybe. So anyways, I have my, my basic controller. And this one just checks if this is mine. And then I, you know, set up my camera, you know, like unparent it, activate it. I also create a, a HUD itself. And then it just kind of dives in and checks the logic. So then we go and we look over to our my lock on FSM, which we'll look at in a minute. And it looks and it sees if we have a target, which <coughs> obviously in the beginning you're not going to have. It'll be null. So it goes null. So we go to the normal move, and I turn on my root motion, and I just do a simple move, and I look at that direction and I set animator bools and I set my floats uh, I, I check for grounded so you can jump and fall and that's all working I should have shown that as well but I didn't we have a jump key we have an attack key um, I also have this being parried thing which I'll show you that in a second too and <coughs> we're also we're still looking for if we have a locked on target and if it is null we're going to hop over because if it's if it's not null we zip over here and it's almost the same thing uh, we get the axis vector we do the simple move but i now look at my target um you know, I still set bools. Now, this is also one of the other differences: is I inverse transformed direction of this axis vector um, to the player himself. And I store another vector. I pull out the x and the z, and I use those for the animator. And that just allows uh, a much smoother control it feels a lot nicer I don't know how to explain that like if if I say if I'm pushing forward or up whatever and the character is running up he's going forward he's going away from the camera or whatever he's going north and say a lock on the character uh, I don't want him to move forward anymore because he's now facing the enemy, if that makes any sense. Because now if I hit forward and he's facing the enemy, he, he goes towards the enemy. So then you have to hit back and he goes backwards and left and right. And at first I had it like that. And it, it's not bad if you go on certain angles. Uh, but once you get over and like say you're on the other side of an enemy, uh, and all of a sudden everything feels backwards. So it, it, it's really weird. So I changed it all to, to this style. To where now when you're locked on if I push up he literally goes up on on the screen he goes upwards and if I push left he goes left on the screen regardless of which way he's facing so it's kind of nice because if you're trying to back away from enemy like you're pushing down and you're running down here you're still you're facing the enemy but you're moving backwards if you get too far away and it goes back over here your guy automatically spins around and keeps running down it's just it's it's much more fluent I find so anyways so we have fall and I do a small simple move and I, I just I, I maintain this vector that was kept over here I don't get the vector because I, I don't want it to go zero yet and I just do a small weight and I keep it moving and that's due to if you go off an edge um, the fall the fall event uh, for is grounded to me it felt like it was triggering too quickly and the collider was still trying to catch the wall and it kind of made for a jagged ugly drop off of things so I maintain a small movement in the, in, in the same direction you were going just briefly just to help you push off that edge and then and then do the fall and that, that actually worked really good uh, once we once we land, we, or we just we kind of naturally just go back into this, make sure if we have a target or not. So we choose which way. Uh, if we jump, I use the controller jump. 
we are, we, I turn off root motion. Um, you know, we, we do the animators, and I just do a, just a s simple jump, nothing major, and I land, I go back here. If, if the player, if you're moving and you get parried, uh, you, you'll automatically fly over and zip into this, and all it is is it, it, it'll help <coughs> uh, control the direction. And it does a weight, so more or less, if you get parried, you're you kind of you're stuck facing that direction. Because I found if I didn't do this, uh, when you get parried, because of the root motion, you can't move, and you're playing the right animation. But because of the uh, the smooth look at, I could still spin my character, and I, I didn't like that. I didn't like the feel of that. So when I when I get parried, I just want to stop. So that's kind of what that does. And when I attack, I kind of do the same thing. And I'm going to put a little delay into this one too. It doesn't have it right now. The, the attack itself only really just uh, plays the animation. Uh, I got a special jump animation. So once again, I check his mind. I, I didn't name these states. Uh, and we just, we, we're just kind of more or less looking for ground. And I, I interplate the jumping value uh, for how it is in the blend tree and then it more or less he just oh, this one's really not that important or, or impressive it's just we're just playing that 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 state uh, the animations and we just interplay a value for it so we have weapon uh, some of the names of these things I gotta change and these ones are based on animation events in this one. So we have one for the trail. And all I do is I broadcast my ID, which I get in the start. Get my photon ID. I broadcast a event uh, that my ID needs a, needs a trail. So I use the event RPC trail. And that's all this guy does. And then that way everyone can see uh, my character turning on his weapon trail. Hit, when it comes from the animation event, I turn on my attack trigger. I'm just using, for my attacking, I just have a nice big freaking square trigger like that. So, I turn it on, I do a tiny little weight, uh, when we hit a target, or if we hit a target, if something hits this trigger, uh, I get this this bool from what I hit. This bool is is I made a special script. I'll show you that too. It's very simple to sync their parry. Uh, so. I, I, I can make sure that it's 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 a real relatively accurate reliable system so I get their parry um, I get their photon ID and of course we check are, are, are they actually doing a parry or not and if we do a normal hit I just send I am doing an event uh, the ID of my target, and I broadcast that of RPC hit, and then I set up my blood and my damage. So my blood I do an instantiate, as you can see there, and we send another event off to another FSM that actually handles the damage. And then we just make sure that everything's turned off and everything's normal clear everything out turn off the trigger all right and if we're parried we broadcast an event uh, to the, to the same target right the ID of my target and we say parry we want him to parry and then <clears throat> we tell ourselves that hey we, we have been parried so we need to stop that movement thing we need to do our delay we need to do our animation I do a tiny weight, turn the animation off because I'm, I'm using bools, not triggers. So I turn it on, do a tiny weight. I do a weight long enough to in to ensure that 
that photon should sink everything over quite easily. And then I turn it off. Pretty straightforward so far. Uh, this is my special script. So I have is parry and is vulnerable. So, I mean, if I open that up and show you that one real quick, there's, no, there's nothing really special to this. I, I also did a tutorial on this style of syncing. Uh, and it's just, it's a, if you have something you want to make sure you, you know, it, it's a good way. So I have two bools, is parry, is vulnerable. And we have on photon serialization view, so you have to use the eye pun ob, observable. And if we're reading, is parry is equal to receive next. If we're writing, then we send these valuables or these variables into the, the stream. So pretty, pretty, pretty small, pretty straightforward. Uh, this guy here is just kind of a, I'm, just, I'm not doing that much. So he, he just checks his mind and we have two two different things if it's mine and not mine so if it's mine we we're going to talk with the script and we set that that parry in into some fsms and we s set things here and, and vice versa if it's not mine then we want to get some values and set those around so the lock on script uh, we just we turn around we go to our controller and we say hey Kate what is your HUD because we need to get that reference and then we just sit here and we say okay hey, our target is nothing and we need a, a button or an action or something to happen so then we say okay let's let's reset our stuff let's set our variables that we're using in this clear everything out and then we're gonna do an overlap sphere um using the array list a range of six and then i check the the count of that array and if it's greater than zero um i'm going to loop through this uh, array if it's not greater than zero then just go back to this and wait so when we loop through okay the thing we hit is it is it even alive because if it's not alive, then just ignore it and we don't care about it. Um, and it, okay, so if it is alive, how far are we? Are we too far? Um, and distance wise, is the distance closer than say the previous target, right? So if we hit three targets, more or less, what is the, what is the closest target? And if we have a closest target, let's set our, our values. This is, the, this is the, the best distance and this is the target we want. And we go back and we check it again, right? And if, if, the be if, if this new distance we're getting is lower than the best distance, then we'll set a target again. If not, let's go to something else. Then we go, we, we're gonna go to our HUD and we say, hey, we have a target, this is my target. And then we'll say, okay, on the return do we have a target or not because if we if we don't if if we don't have a target just go here but if we have a target well let's go here which is the same as this guy except we want to check that distance and we want to check his health and if the target is dead or the distance gets too far let's just redo the whole thing All right so that's the lock on and the HUD master thing like once once it once it has a target it knows to go to the health FSM and you get the health uh, current max and name and that's how we display up top this is why it said player because more or less the that little cheap AI had standing there he's using the same FSMs so health so far, I don't have a whole lot of work into it, but we have an RPC for taking damage. And we just subtract the damage from our health. And we're, we're either dead or we're not dead. 
Okay, so down here, this is kind of one of the bigger ones. This is this is this is where everything's getting synced. So let's 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 get to that one in a minute. The inventory one I'm actually still working on. I can't even really show you this one uh, too much. But more or less, if I change, you know, like like a left leg armor piece from my inventory, I need to send that event so I can sync it. So I send a certain event down saying, okay, I'm changing the left leg. So we get this event and uh, oh, you know what I got to put in the beginning of those is the 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 uh, the ID check. I forgot to add that in here. Oh no, I put it right here. Ah, never mind. Because because that's 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 my ID right over here. All right, so never mind. So I did put it in. So I checks. So okay, if this is mine. So if if the I if the if the data uh, comes in two parts, I split it up. Is the ID that the player the player to which is doing the change and then the piece value and then more or less we just get whatever um root on the male and the female versions and we activate solo of that piece and i need to do this one twice because I have peace value I don't have it twice and I use it twice down here but anyways yeah I'm still doing a lot of work on that so damage I have three damages <clears throat> um, two of these these two come from animation events and this guy doesn't he comes from uh, one of the previous FSMs so all we do is we we're, we're gonna okay we're gonna get our lock on target because the only way to do the the backstab and the front stab is to have a lock on target to begin with right so we're gonna go to our tar or go to our FSM grab that target um, we take our damage and I multiply it for both of these they're both pretty much the same and this guy we get um, our target from our our weapon FSM that does the trigger so if we've hit something and we're gonna send damage uh, where it's coming from obviously we hit something so we're gonna grab that value and, and and then we don't modify the damage uh, we get the ID value of whatever we hit uh, we build a string for the target ID and the modified damage and then we broadcast that out to the health so this guy here is how we sync a lot of stuff here so he does a lot of the this is like the work workhorse so far of the multiplayer portion of this so here's trail so we're just checking okay is this is this mine more or less only I, I use the IDs if so we need to go to our weapon find its child uh, and play the particles if we do an RPC hit, we again we check it's mine. If it is, we're going to use the bool for being hurt, uh, and then we're going to set a false. I don't know why I put that in there, but it's there apparently. Same thing with the parry. Check is mine. Set the the, the animator up. Uh, same thing with the stabbed. Set the animator. Same thing with the backstab. Set the animator. So pretty simple stuff right we're just checking to see if we are the ID of this broadcast and if we are we're just gonna run our stuff if not then don't run it pretty pretty simple but that's that's how everything is getting linked is, is this is the main one if I go to the HUD oh yeah save all that uh, all this one does is we activate the enemy health and if we have a target and if we don't have a target so if if we have a target right so this thing's turned off we need to get the name the max health 
and set the name, change up the slider, the max values and the current values. And then we need to uh, see if we ever lose target. If we lose target, and clear it off. All right, so I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Said and it's it actually works pretty good. Um, everything's syncing up. Everything's working the way it's supposed to be working. Um, had a bunch of random keys. He like said and everything's like I said. I don't have sounds or anything yet. N none of this is working. I just kind of put it there for now. I hit and he parries. I go into my vulnerable state. All right, but if I come up behind him, actually, let's grab our target first. Because if I don't have a target, uh, I, I can't stab. I'll just do normal hits. All right, so I've, I've linked. See, and this is kind of what I was trying to explain to you with earlier. All right, like right now, if I push forward or up, I run up. If I push down, I run down. Well, left and right. Pretty straightforward. And if I lock on, I want it to be that same way. But now I don't want down to be like, like I, I, I still want it to go down towards the world, even though he's facing the other way. All right? Like if I push right, he needs to go right. And before he would just strafe around in circles. And part of that was fine. But like I said, like when you come up here and you're pushing forward to move this way, it just didn't make any sense. Like it was just weird. So this just feels a lot more, a lot more fluent. So I go up, give him a stab. I got to fix that little thing. If I get too close, he, he'll slide. He stands up. Give another stab, kick him over, laugh at his misfortune for being stabbed, tell him to die. See how his the health bar now is now gone. He's fallen over. He's dead. You know, it's in, and there's the jump. But you see how like the animation kind of it, it's not a it, it's actually it's a blended animation through 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 a jump. So that's kind of how the jumping works probably a little high for this style of game a little hard on the landing but anyways thought I would share that and I'll talk to you guys in the future